Friday, Benson teaches a class. Sorry, I'm late. And guess who wants to be teacher's pet? Whoa, mama, whoa. Then Felix meets his dream girl, but he's fighting heavyweight competition. I don't want to get angry. The new odd couple, and on the greatest American hero. <laughs> now you see him, now you don't. Then, on the quest. They got guns? The royal cousins go out on a limb to save a kidnap victim. They got our picture, and here comes the plane. Tonight on ABC. One life to live. We've got today. Karen gives in to temptation. Right. We have today. But how long will it last? And on the edge of night. Oh, I'm finding Monticello much too interesting at the moment. And what's so interesting about it? I'll give you three guesses. Raven Alexander. What sort of a wife would Raven make? One life to live. The edge of night. Weekdays. The People's Court today at 4:30. Bye, Miles. You look like hell this morning. Like you didn't get any sleep last night? I didn't. I thought a few double scotches would help. They didn't. I'm sorry about the way I look. I gotta go home and shave before I go to the hospital. Want some coffee? Yes, I sure would. You wanna help yourself? What is with Nora Fulton? She sure hates you. She was telling me about this alleged rape attempt with relish. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Any opportunity to disparage me or Nicole, she just, she welcomes. I'm not being paranoid about that either. I mean, that's just a simple fact. Miles, she had her witness in tow, your office nurse, Barbara Montgomery. She corroborated everything Nora said. How do you account for that? In one word, collusion. Well, I thought of that too, but why? Look, uh, the fact is I had to fire Barbara two days ago. Oh. So this is her little way of getting revenge, I guess. As, as, for, as for Nora's for reasons... Nora, you I... think that might be because you accused her of deliberately trying to run down Mitzi Martin? I'm absolutely convinced of that. I wish I had some proof for it, but I, I'm afraid all I can give you is my opinion. Well, you know, I'll do everything I can here to find out if your opinion is justified, but we've got an obstacle there. We haven't been able to find a witness to that accident. And even, even Mitzi herself thinks that she was to blame. She says she was in a daydream when she walked out into the street. Nora certainly knew how to set the whole thing up, didn't she? Maybe she did. Now, I tell you, I'm not, uh, I'm not that really that upset about Nora because one expects this kind of thing from her, but Barbara, I, uh, for her to back up Nora's story like that, that is the real shocker. Tell me something, Miles. Why did you feel it necessary to fire her? She wasn't doing the job, that's, that's all. If you fired her a couple of days ago, what was she doing in your office last night? Uh, she volunteered to stay on a couple extra days, get the place ready for her replacement. Miles, considering the circumstances, I think you could tell me a little bit more about this dismissal. What did she do wrong? Well, she misunderstood my attitude toward her. She mistook what was kindness, affection for something a little bit more serious. All right, I'm, I'm Look, starting Look, maybe to... it was partly my fault. I don't really know. It's a woman. Rejected, and hell's got no fury like a woman scorned, huh? That is the explanation. You believe that now, don't you? I believe you, Miles. I, you know I believe you. It's just... Just what? That was not the only claim that Barbara Montgomery made last night. She said that Nora is not the only woman that you have taken advantage of, that this has been going on for years, and it goes all the way back to the Claremont Hospital. I'm not expecting anybody this morning. No, stop her. She doesn't have an appointment with Mrs. Cavanaugh. Mrs. Cavanaugh isn't even home. Oscar, you should never have let that woman in this building. Oh, Oscar. Good morning.
Edge of Night is brought to you by Mountain Grown Folgers, Mountain Grown Coffee, the richest kind, and by Era, a combination of powerful cleaners to clean all the way through. To be a great detergent for all your wash means cleaning more than just the surface dirt. It means cleaning the dirts that go all the way through. It takes a combination of powerful cleaners all concentrated together, penetrating cleaners for deep down dirts, for soaked in grease, for seeped in food, for ground in collar soil, all concentrated to put more cleaning power right on the stain. It's the powerful quarter cup formula called Error. Watch how just a little error cleans all the way through these three layers of tough stains. Put a teaspoon of error only on the top. Its power penetrates. Rub, run under warm water, and look. The error cleaned all the way through, even through the collar soil. That's the kind of clean you want for all your wash. Error cleans all the way through. Mmm, love the smell of Irish soda bread baking. That aroma of hot raisins and candied fruit fills the house. I'm Mrs. Olson. I remember Mrs. O'Brien saying, make it right, girl. The right ingredients make such a difference in how food tastes. <laughs> ingredients do make the delicious difference, especially in coffee. You take Folgers. Folgers' delicious ingredient is mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown coffee has more rich flavor and aroma than other kinds of coffee. Delicious. Good coffee is like good cooking. Mountain Grown is the ingredient that makes Folgers delicious. Try Mountain Grown Folgers. Okay, you tell Cat, you just turn right around and leave. I'll leave when I feel like leaving. This place is a mess. What'd you do, spend your morning loafing? How do you even have the gall to come up here like this after what you've done to the Cavanaugh? Why don't we step outside and talk about it? Listen, I didn't do anything. I'm the one that's the victim here. What are you doing here? You and I both know you lied to Oscar about having an appointment with Mrs. Cavanaugh. I don't need an appointment. She'll be only too glad to see me. Oh, yes. She'd be happier to see Attila the Hun coming up in the elevator. Now, look, I hate to put a crimp in your plans, but Mrs. Cavanaugh is not here. So either you leave on your own, or I get Oscar to throw you out. Woo! Oscar! <laughs> Who do you think you are, the guardian of the castle? Listen, I don't think you'll be too eager to protect the Kavanaugh menagerie when you find out what happened last night. You don't know about that, do you? Oh, yes, I know what happened last night. The gospel according to Nora Fulton. Well, you know what? It just made me laugh. Because of all the filthy lies you've ever told, that's the biggest and the most ridiculous. I see you've heard all the denials of the good doctor and his unblemished wife. They don't need any denials. Anybody who knows Dr. Kavanaugh knows what a fine man he is, and anybody who knows you knows what a liar you are. So there's nobody, not a soul, on this earth that's gonna believe your phony rape story. As a matter of fact, it's the truth. Now look, before I kick you out of here myself, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. You better stop spreading that story, or you're gonna get hurt. <laughs> if I didn't know you better, I might think that was a threat. Listen. You don't realize I'm here on an errand of mercy this morning. You are. I've come to tell Mrs. Kavanaugh I'm willing to forgive and forget. I'm not going to press charges against her husband. Isn't that nice of me? It's smart of you is what it is, because if you do press charges, you're going to end up in jail on but perjury. I don't press charges. I'll still have to do one thing about the matter. What matter? The matter of sexual attack, better known as rape. You see, as a public-spirited kind of person, I think I should go to the newspapers with this story. I think the general public has the right to know the way Miles Cavanaugh plays, Doctor, and that publicity could get his license revoked. I don't know. I think I should go to the newspapers. What do you think? Yeah? Uh, Mr. Rain gun. Oh, I hope you're in the mood for breakfast, sir. Yeah, well, I'll give it a try anyway. My temperature's still not normal. Damn, I wanted to make that meeting this morning, too. Yeah, very important, sir. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. Fix your tie. Yeah, it's very important, yes, sir. Well, I would skip that meeting if I were you, Mr. Whitney. Health is much more important. Yeah, you really shouldn't rush into things until you're feeling tipped off. You know how these viruses can bounce back on you? Yeah. You know, I've been wondering if perhaps you haven't been coming down with something yourself. Who, me? Why, what makes you say that? 
because you've been behaving strangely, that's why. Oh, no, 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 not me, Mr. Whitney. I just, you know, I have a few things on my mind, uh, that's all. What things? Well, I... Really, Mr. Whitney, I, I know you don't like to hear about problems among the staff, and I especially don't want to unload on you when you're feeling sick like this. Gunther, I'd be delighted to know what your problems are. Please tell me. Uh, well, honestly, I don't like to talk about it, Mr. Whitney, but it's... Well, it's Nora. Nora? Yes, sir. I know that I recommended her for the job, and you have every right to remind me of that. But I was just wondering if, well, uh, maybe it really wasn't a mistake. That's strange. Spencer said just about the same thing to me a couple of days ago, and then he changed his mind. I, what I don't understand is, you're both grown men. Why can't you just work things out among you? Well, sure, we can, sure. Well, then what's the problem? Well, it's nothing. It's really nothing at all. It's just a feeling that, uh, well, she just doesn't quite fit in, you know? You know, Gunther, this is surprising hearing you say this. I mean, I thought the two of you we're very, very close. As a matter of fact, I was wondering when you might not just tie the knot. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Not me, Mr. Whitney. Uh, no, sir. I don't want to get married, ever. And no more than you do. I don't know why you should say that about me, Gunther. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking about doing that very thing. What? Oh, listen, maybe I shouldn't say this, Mr. Whitney, but please, would you just think about that a little bit? Uh, let me get that. Uh, Whitney Residence. Uh, yes, one moment, please. Uh, it's Mr. Devereaux. Mm. Hello, Ian. Morning. I was sorry to hear that you were under the weather, my friend. I'm calling to inquire about your health. Well, I'm still a bit pale and shaky, but I'm getting better. I dare say I'll survive. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Perhaps I'll stop by later and check on you myself. Oh, well, that'll be very nice of you. Oh, by the way, how did you know that I was sick? Uh, Raven told me. Ah. Don't lose your cool. Put your throat on nice. Ice for a sore throat? New nice medicated lozenges. Sugarless nice showers minor sore throat pain with medicine for temporary relief. And nice actually absorbs heat to cool your mouth and throat. Hmm. Feels slickery. Slickery? Yeah, slick, slippery, slickery. And I feel better. Good. Gin. Oh. For temporary relief, put your throat on nice. For nice, cool pain relief. Here you go. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. This is such a nice idea. We haven't seen each other for such a long time. I know. I see you so infrequently these days. But I guess it's because we're both so busy. Hmm? How's Mike? Oh, overworked. And loving every minute of it. <laughs> And how is that tall, handsome fellow of yours? You mean Jim? Ooh, I forgot. There are two men in your life that fit that description. <laughs> Jim is on top of the world, basking in the success of the Whitney Theater, standing room only every night, the terrific reviews, and the company's happy. I'm so glad for him because he worked so hard to make a go of that theater. Isn't it wonderful that he went from the bottom right to the peak in such a short time? Yeah, it's amazing. But as Jim told me one time, you never have one job in the theater. You have several or none. Mm -hmm, mm hmm Success often breeds success. There's no doubt about it. As a matter of fact, Jim has received another offer because of the hit at the Whitney. Really? Oh, that's wonderful. What is it? Well, it came through a friend of Buffy Revere's, and it's to be a producer for a new repertory company in New York. Oh. Well, would he consider it, though? I mean, he already has the job here. I know, but that's not a job in New York. New York is the mecca of the entertainment world, as Buffy so adamantly pointed out. And Jim's not really producing plays here. He's more managing a theater, bringing in road companies. You know, he's working with established hits. Yeah, that is true, of course. Yeah. So this would be an opportunity to produce original plays with a permanent company in the center of the theater world. It's a marvelous opportunity and one that I know he's dreamt about for a long time. Well, is it definite? No, no, they're still in the talking stages, but I know that if he wants it, Buffy will make sure he gets it. But it isn't something that, that you would want, or is it? I don't know, Nancy. 
I'm afraid to want anything. I think that Jim should decline or accept this offer because of what he wants, though, and not because of me. So I'm trying not to do or say anything to influence him. Well, Valerie, I think you've just given yourself the best advice. I think you're right. You shouldn't try to influence his decision. He should make up his own mind. Yeah, I think so, too. Thanks. I needed to hear that. You're a good listener. Monica, you should feel better. Besides, if you don't eat, you'll fall over. Didn't your mother ever tell you that? My goodness. Nancy, welcome to Sis. Hi, Val. Hi. Hello, Mrs. Hello, Val. Would you like to join us? Oh, uh, no, no, no. We wouldn't want to interrupt. Oh, poor Dee Dee. Poor Cliff. Yeah, they're usually so happy. What, what's, what's the matter? Dee Dee's brother, Troy, goes on trial for murder tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Well, that certainly was rude. Cliff, this was your idea. Now, what are you going to have? Hey, who knows? Who cares? Brought you some coffee. Looked like you could use it. Thanks, Sid. Instinctively, you did the right thing. Yeah, well, you got the miseries, right? And bad. I knew the reason why, too. Hey, Sid, come on, join us. We'll all wallow in Dee Dee's despair. I want you to listen to me. Now, I don't know where this is going to go or if it means anything, but I got something to tell you about Troy and that policeman he shot. No, Douglas, that's Grandma. <laughs> the little one with the cuddly blankets, me. Grandma sure made life soft for me. She only washed my blanket in high-free snow. It's made from pure, gentle soap. So it helps keep a baby's things nice and soft. Now little Sarah's an ivory snow baby. Because I want to. Oh, what do you think? Yay. Ivory snow babies have always Freshness of morning. Ooh, the grunginess of morning breath. Morning. Minty fresh scope? Uh-uh. Mine works. Can't you tell the difference? Yeah, you just turn morning breath to medicine breath. Scope leaves your breath minty fresh. Try. Ah, minty fresh. Some sensation. Some difference. Morning. Ah, scope. Fights bad breath, doesn't give medicine breath. I know I'm new, but this price can't be right. What's wrong? Ivory costs less than just about all the other soaps in the store. It usually does. I can't believe a great soap like Ivory costs less. I mean, that rich lather and natural kind of clean. In fact, four bars of Ivory usually cost less than three of most others. I thought they'd charge more for a great soap like Ivory. They probably should. You'd expect to pay more for Ivory, but isn't it nice you don't have to? No, it's kind of funny the way it came out. I mean, almost accidental. You see, I noticed in the last few days something strange about my partner, Eddie. Oh, just in the last few days, huh? Oh, Cliff, quiet, please. No, what I mean is I could see that something was bothering him. And I noticed that he also got even more hot and bothered every time the Didi came into the place. And especially when you talk to him. So I ask him, why are you so nervous? And he says, I hate lawyers. <laughs> and with good reason. So, anyway, I started pushing him to give it to me straight. And finally, last night, we sat down after we closed the place, and we had a drink. And at first, he was kind of cute and cool, and then all of a sudden, it just came out of his mouth about the night Loomis was killed. And? Well, he does admit that he sent Troy to persuade Jody not to go to the Eden Festival. Uh, yes, I knew that. Yeah, but he swears that he had nothing to do with Loomis's being there or drawing a gun on Troy. Oh, come on, Sid, what'd you expect? A written confession? <laughs> All right, okay, I'm sorry. Look, he had to be involved, though. Loomis wasn't working by himself. Well, that I don't know, but I do know that Eddie said that his old buddy, Joe Bulmer, hated your brother that there was real bad blood between them, that they were at each other's throats all the time. So then it wasn't Eddie. It was Loomis and Joel Bomer. Loomis and Joel Bomer who were out to get Troy. Well, looks that way. Now, is that gonna help you? Well, sure, all we have to do is establish a reasonable doubt to the jury. Now, if we could show that Loomis is this crooked cop, he's in cahoots with Joe Bomer. 
And how are we going to do that? I don't know. It's awfully difficult to subpoena the two of them. They're both dead. Is there anything else you want to add to this Nora Fulton nonsense? No, I've told you all I have to tell you. All right. Uh, excuse me. Yes? Oh, all right, fine. Ask him to come on in. It's Mike. All right, Miles, I'll uh, let you know what develops. Sure. Miles, didn't expect to see you here. Well, I'm just leaving. So long, gentlemen. So long. How are you, Mike? Fine. But Miles seems rather preoccupied this morning. Uh, is he carrying a bigger-than-usual workload? He's got some problems. They're not legal problems yet, but let's hope it doesn't get to that point. Anything I can do to help? Nothing at the moment. Well, we've got our own problem, Derek. I'm afraid we're facing a dead end in the scheme to use Raven as a counter-espionage agent in the Devereaux matter. She's being very stubborn about cooperating. Well, that doesn't surprise me, Mike. Frankly, I, uh... I didn't think this was going to work. Raven is much too self-centered to do anything that would help somebody else. I'm sure she'll go on seeing Ian Devereaux, but just as long as it suits her purposes and no longer. Now, everything has to suit her purposes and the hell with everything else, even if we are talking about national security. Well, I can't think of any solution, except perhaps we should try to persuade her once more. And if she still refuses, we'll have to tell David Cameron he'll need an entirely new approach, if there is one. Yeah? Gunther said it was okay if I came on up. Oh, of course, Ian. Nice of you to stop by. I'm just gonna be a couple of minutes here. How are you? Oh, first rate. Wish I could say the same about you, old boy. Oh. You look like hell. Thank you. That's about the way I feel. Rotten, huh? Yeah, well, I, I maybe begin to feel a little better when I look a little more like myself. Maybe you should think about getting out of Monticello before the cold weather sets in. Fly south. Somewhere warm and sunny. Sit under a palm tree in Florida. Contemplate a naval orange. <laughs> Well, that sounds very tempting, but I'm afraid I've just got a little bit too much in the way of business here in Monticello, especially this new project of mine, the TV station. You've got no idea how complex it is to run a television business. It really is fascinating. Especially the news department. I'm kicking around some ideas of changing the structure kind of radically. I'd like to talk these ideas over with you sometime. Ian. Ian. Yes? What was that about structure? Oh, well, never mind. I've got to spend some more time thinking over the ideas myself. But how about yourself? Have you toyed with the idea of getting out of town for the winter? I mean, avoiding this terrible weather that they're predicting? No, I'm finding Monticello much too interesting at the moment. Oh. And what's so interesting about it? Personal reasons? I'll give you three guesses. Raven Alexander. Right. Seems to me that things are becoming serious where she's concerned, huh? I don't think one can be that serious about something like Raven. She's like Quicksilver. Well, if I remember my biology correctly, that can be a dangerous poison. Not if it's handled correctly. I've taught myself to survive the Clinches, as they say. And tell me, Skye, in your opinion, what sort of a wife would Raven make? Katie, you okay? Lucky I finished cleaning before the lights went out. I can tell. My house never smelled so clean before. That's the pine saw signal. That fresh scent says more than clean. How come? Because pine saw cleaner disinfectant cuts through grease, kills household germs and odors, and leaves a fresh scent that says more than clean, even with the lights out. The pine saw <laughs> signal tells the world your house is more than clean. If you're poor in Kellogg's Court Place, you'll burn the special place on the front of America's favorite cereal. Sit down to America's favorite cereal. The face on the package is you, and it's gonna 
My children. With me. What? I want to wake up tomorrow morning with you in my arms. Jenny. All my children. Weekdays. Will you get out of here? Maybe I'll have another cup. Okay, that's it. I'm calling Oscar. All right, all right. Take it easy. I'm going. But only because I want to. You know, Mrs. Goodman, you really ought to quit this job right now. You're not going to want to be around here when things start happening. Unpleasant things, that is. Meaning? Well, there's bound to be an enormous amount of publicity. And then Dr. Kavanaugh, of course, will lose his license. And then, naturally, his wife will divorce him. It won't be much fun, you know what I'm you saying? You fool! No! Stay alone! No, you, I hate you! 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 New Tidy Cat 3 is a hard-working pack box filler. Oh, Tidy Cat 3. When you go, you go, mmm. One. If the odor rises better. Two. Absorbs like a real go-getter. Three. It leaves a clean, fresh scent. Tidy Cat 3. Got three-way odor controller. So when you go, you go, mm -hmm. It's one hard-working cat box filler. Use sandpaper to clean your stovetop? Ridiculous. Yet if you're cleaning with scouring powder, you're probably using the same harsh, scratchy abrasives found in this sandpaper. And that can be rough on your stovetop. That's why soft scrub is better. It's a liquid cleanser that cleans like a scouring powder, but because it has milder abrasives, it doesn't scratch like one. Soft scrub cleans even tough spills like this, but leaves no sandy grit. Try soft scrub. Cleans like a scouring powder, but doesn't scratch like one. ABC's World News Tonight. Five years after Anwar Sadat's visit to Jerusalem, is there any hope for peace? How is Sadat remembered? And does his name still carry images of bitterness and bravery to Palestinians and Jews? ABC News, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. Save today at Martin Paint's famous second gallon free paint sale. Buy the first gallon, get the second gallon of the same paint free. It ain't just this is Stormfield. Coming up on the 5 o'clock Eyewitness News, a brutal murder in Jersey City. The victim, a young woman who was savagely attacked and left to die. We'll have the latest on the hunt for the killer, and we'll also have this Eyewitness News special report. The newest thing in soap operas. It leaves almost nothing to the imagination. I'm Maxine Black, and I'll tell you about it in my special report. Where can you find the best pizza in town? Josh Howell is going to tell you as he continues his series. Join us at 5. My coffee cup. A spoonful makes a mugful when it's maxim. That's rich. 
my cup. A spoonful makes a mugful when it's Maxim. That's rich. Compared to this other leading freeze-dried coffee, Maxim concentrates 27% more coffee into every spoonful. Instead of a cup, Maxim makes a mugful. My cup. A spoonful makes a mugful when it's Maxim. Mmm, that's rich. Maxim, the spoonful rich enough for a mugful. Seven on location tonight at 7.30. This is the plaintiff, Donald Campbell. Sunday, Clint Eastwood, the network television premiere, Escape from Alcatraz. Okay, two down, two on, clean up hitter at bat. Catch your signals for Kelly's fastball. Every kid needs a dream, and someone to share that dream with. But there's something they don't need. They don't need caffeine. That's why we created a new cola, introducing Like. Like doesn't add caffeine like Coke and Pepsi. Like gets its excitement from full, rich cola taste. Next stop, the big leagues. You don't need caffeine, and neither does your cola. Don't get out, don't get out, don't get out of the shower without putting on shower do. New Shower Dew Body Lotion, a better way to moisturize. It's different. You use it right in the shower. Ooh, Shower Dew. Shower Dew works with water, softens your skin like nothing else. Ooh, Shower Dew. So fast, never greasy. Ooh, Shower Dew. So for a better way to moisturize, don't get out of the shower without putting on Shower Dew. Listen to the radio station that listens to you. Cruising to Mexico, this week at 11. I'm going to pick it for a Gilbert's Corn Flakes. Gilbert's a special place on the front of America's favorite cereal. Sit down to a familiar face. The face of the Gilbert's Corn Flakes lover. The face of America too. When you sit down to America's 